Um, hi everyone, my name is Anda. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Notch, an independent intelligence uh, company that helps marketers like you understand the impact of your content marketing. But before I was a founder and an entrepreneur, um, I was a Stanford data nerd who was trying to answer a pretty simple fundamental question. How does content move us emotionally online? And so with that question about four years ago, I decided to start building a product in Silicon Valley. And about two years ago, I decided to move myself and my then 10-person team from the heart of San Francisco to the heart of New York to be closer to you, marketers. And so for the past two years, we've been working with CMOs and their organizations to understand um, what are the most fundamental questions that CMOs have and how could we best answer them as data nerds? So I wanted to start by sharing with you a few of those questions and to see if some of them resonate with you. And feel free to raise your hand if you've thought about this before or heard this question before. Number one question, does content marketing actually work? Has anyone thought about that before? I see one hand. <laughs> um, and if it works, how much content is too much content? Given that everyone around the CMO is encouraging the CMO to make more content, how, how do you know when to stop? The second question, how can we compute the exact ROI of content marketing in real time? I mean, so many buzzwords all in one question, right? Um, and finally, if we do compute that ROI, how do I know how I'm doing against my competitors? How can I benchmark myself against everyone else in the market who's competing for the attention of my audience? And how can I get ahead of them? And then finally, given all the data, the final question always is, how do I know if I can trust the data? And so for the last two years, my team and I have built software um, and have collected data to help marketing organizations answer the first three questions. We've demystified the multivariate uh, computation of content marketing ROI. We've been able to benchmark one brand's efforts against another brand's efforts and then help them figure out how to get ahead. Um, but the one thing that was really difficult for us to, to deal with was the trust question. And this question, I think, really um, starts indicating some of the limitations of software and data. And look, it's really actually hard for me to admit this because even though I'm an immigrant to this country, I grew up in Silicon Valley as an entrepreneur, and so I think software and data can save the world, or in this case, marketers. But I've realized that there's a few paradoxes in our industry that I think are really important to point out that are relevant to the theme of this conference. We sort of live in this world where big data is like the sexy thing, right? And marketers are investing a lot of money in software that can help them collect and analyze big data. But we're constantly running into marketers who say, we have so much data, too much data, and not enough intelligence. And the second really interesting thing is the fact that they can't really trust their data. So how can we solve those problems? Well, I think there's two limitations that we need to think about. The first one is that um, software is really not perfect at understanding human emotion. And I think any data company that doesn't see the limitations of its own data set um, is going to cripple the power of any data set. I've seen time and time again with sentiment and attitudinal data collection that we often forget to account for the human in, um, in understanding the human emotion. So there's a lot of companies that imply how we feel based on our behavior online. There's a lot of companies that try to figure out how we feel based on how we move our face. But there's not a lot of companies or data nerds that stop for a second and say, how did this content make you feel? So I've come to realize as a data nerd that the truth about any human or any audience is that the intersection between what our behavior says about us, but then also what we say about ourselves. And I think it's really important that in this age, we don't forget to take into account the human when trying to understand human emotion. The second part, the second limitation, deals with a problem that has been pretty endemic in our industry, and we've been talking about it for a while now. Um, it's, it's a word that we throw around, trust. How can marketers start trusting the data that's getting reported back to them? So I want to start by saying something that you all know. Marketers pay for the rest of us to use the internet. And the money goes from marketer to agency to distribution channel. When it comes to data reporting, it happens completely the opposite way. So distribution channels are in charge of measuring their own performance. That's kind of like grading your own homework. If I allowed you to grade your own homework, would you ever give yourself a C? I wouldn't. <laughs> so 
So it's very difficult to trust the data that comes back because you're always doing great. You're constantly getting great news that don't correlate with business results. And I think that has a lot to do with the limited tenure of CMOs nowadays. So how can we change that? How can we make sure that not only we have the right software, but we place it in the right hands? I've been thinking a lot about this over the last two years, and you know, I came into this market wanting to build software, and then I started realizing that I have to gear up for a much bigger fight. I think there's two sides to this fight. On the one hand, you have data companies, like Notch. And I think data companies need to make a financial commitment not to make money from any distribution channel or partner of the brand, to align themselves financially with the brand, because that's the only way that we can start reporting the truth back to the brand. Even though the truth may be hurt sometimes, it leads to learning faster and getting to a pretty efficient marketplace. But I think the second part of, a com of the commitment, and really the reason why I wanted to talk to all of you today, is for the marketers to start demanding that their distribution channels give them independent measurement. If you're paying for your advertising to be distributed, you should be getting the right to measure your own advertising. Maybe you should even own that data. So today, I want you to really think about these questions. Do I trust my data? Do I trust the people who are, me who are measuring my, the performance of my campaigns? Do I own that data? And if you have great answers to those questions, awesome. And if you don't have great answers to those questions, please talk to your agency to recommend a really good independent partner, or feel free to email me at andednotch.com. Thank you. <laughs>